Hey everybody, welcome home. You're watching Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons. We're glad to have you with us again here today in the House of Faith. Coming to you again from Legacy Church, which is a household of faith. And today I'm standing in the hospitality room of the church or what will be the hospitality room. You can tell there's a lot of construction going on around me right now. We're making awesome progress. It's not just this room that's under construction. I mean, this entire building, there's work going on everywhere you go. And you, you got to love it, man. You love the sound of work. You love the smell of work. It all means progress. And it all means that we are getting closer and closer and closer to being able to open the doors of this church to welcome families from this Green Mountain Falls community, the Colorado Springs community, Woodland Park community, and hey, wherever you are. I mean, you could be watching this from the other side of the planet. You're welcome here. We want you to see and be a part of what God is doing right here at Legacy Church in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. And most of you, especially those of you who are partners with us in this ministry, you know that we are in, involved together in a buy up and build out project. This building is 30,000 square feet and together we've released faith for $100 a square foot. We believe that when that's complete, we can open up the doors of this place. And like I said, begin, receive people, begin receiving people from this area. And when the word of God is preached in this place, we are fully expecting lives to be changed, people to be born again and saved and healed and delivered. And whatever brings God glory, that's what we want happening in this church. As a matter of fact, the scripture that this church is being built on comes from the book of Ephesians chapter three that says, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever, amen. And that is what we're building this place on. We want whatever brings him glory going on in this church. And we believe that it is Jesus for every generation. And so we're excited about being able to serve the entire family. Listen, we're making excellent progress in this project. And, and I wanna remind you that we're not just building a building here. We are building a platform from which you and I together, we reach the nations because that's the assignment on this place. And the progress we're making together is so evidently the goodness and the grace of God. I think one of the last times I updated you, we were about 75% we been making progress, making progress, making progress. And today, as of this recording, we're at about 79, 80% complete. And we are getting there and that's the goodness of God. That's the grace of God. And if he can get us this far, he can get us all the way to the finish. So we want to, again, give you opportunity to sow into this project, especially those of you who are believing God to buy something in your own life, your own family, your own business. If, if God's called you to build something out, then you need to find a kingdom project to invest in because every seed reproduces after its own kind. And if that's going on in your life and if that's, if that's what's in your future, then this might be a good place for you to sow. Go before the Lord, find out, do, do you have an assignment with us in this? And if you do, then jump into it, jump in with faith, excitement, and expectation that what you sow will produce a harvest in your life. A number of ways you can get involved. If you're watching inside the United States, you can text your offering. You can just text uh, LTV in any dollar amount to the number 28950. Now that's gonna go right into this buy up and build out project. If you'd like to give online, you can visit us at pearsonsministries.com. And when you're on the giving page, there's gonna be a couple of different options for you there. There'll be the buy up and build out project. There's also the general operations of the church. You sow where the Lord leads you to sow. If the general operation of your life and your family is where you need to see increase, then that might be a good place to sow. If you'd like to write a check, and uh, you can do that as well, make it to Pearson's Ministries. Uh, use the address that you see there on your screen, and then on your check, we'd like you just to include in the memo where you'd like to designate that offering. If you want it to go into this project, then just write buy up, build out, or B-U-B-O, Bubbo, that's what we call it around here. Or you can write Gen Ops, General Operations, wherever you believe the Lord's leading you to sow it, you designate it there, and that's where it will go. Father, we thank you so much today for the giving of the people. We receive their seed into this ministry. We thank you for it and we call them blessed in Jesus' name. Now, you know the building's under construction, 
But the Lord has so been faithful to us and he has used what's going on around us naturally to paint a picture of what's supposed to be going on inside us, in our hearts and in our minds. The remodel, the reconstruction, and the renewing of the way we think results in a transformation in our lives. That's what we've been talking about as a church as we've met together online over these last several weeks and months. And I want to take you again today back into the sanctuary as we continue in this series called Renovation Transformation and what it means to be under construction in your own life. I believe you'll be blessed by the word today. Stay tuned and I'll be back at the end of this broadcast. Jesus said, to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And we quote that verse a lot. You'll know the truth, the truth will make you free. You'll know the truth, the truth will make you free. What will the truth do? The truth will set you free. But it was, what Jesus said before that was, if you continue in my word, See, knowing the truth only comes from knowing the Word because the Word of God is the truth. There's nothing fake. There's nothing false in it because there's nothing fake. There's nothing false in Him. He can not lie. And if you want intimacy with Him, it requires honesty. It requires possessing that same that same character. And I'll tell you this, if you are willing to tell a lie, you'll be quick to believe a lie. If you'll tell lies, then you'll believe lies. You will be easily fooled. You'll be fooled by the fakeness, by the falseness around us. And then if you are fooled by it, if you buy into it, it won't be long. You'll be conformed to it. You'll look just like the rest of this world. You'll sound just like the rest of this world. And there'll be no difference between you and them. But there's supposed to be a difference. And the difference is the difference between truth and a lie. If you're willing to tell a lie, you'll be quick to believe a lie. You'll be easily fooled. But if you just continue in the word of God. Now, Jesus is speaking to the ones that believe on him. He's talking to a big crowd and not everybody believes, but now he's talking specifically to the ones who believe. He says, okay, you believe. That's good. Stay with it. Stick with this. Just stay with it and get up every day and stay with the word and get the word in your heart and get the word going in your ears. Get the word going into your mind because the truth will rip down walls. The truth will renovate and will rip out lies and everything that has to take place in this demo day when we rip out stuff that doesn't belong. We rip out stuff that can't support the new structure going in. We rip out things and demolish things that are killing us. You get rid of that so that life can go into you. This is demo day. And Jesus said, if you continue in the word, that's when you know the truth and that's when the truth will set you free. But then they answered and said, hey, listen, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? See, these people thought they were free just because of their nationality and where they were from. That's like many, many people in our own country. In the United States of America, they believe they're Christian because they're Americans. <laughs> but that's not what makes you a Christian. Being born in this nation and even being born in a free nation is not what makes you a free person. Not free on the inside. It's the truth and only the truth that can set you free. They said, we're, hey, listen, how can you say you'll be made free? We've never been in bondage. And Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house, of, in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And he talked to them about being Abraham's descendants. And he said, listen, if you were really from Abraham, you would receive me. You would hear me. But he said to him in verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen or to receive my word. 
and his word is truth. So it, doesn't, it didn't make sense to them what he was saying because they couldn't hear the truth. There's one of two responses to the truth. It either excites you or it makes you mad. And Jesus said, take heed how you hear. In other words, when you hear the truth, you need to pay attention to what it does to you. Because even if the truth comes to you and it uncovers and the light comes on and exposes some things specifically in the way you think, and some thought processes and some mindsets that have been in place for a long time. If the light comes on and you see the truth and it shows you this is old, this is wrong, this is rotten, and it's time to get rid of it, the right response to that is excitement. The right response to that is joy because you see on the other side of that mind renovation is life transformation, but it's going to require some demolition. So that's one response. But the other response is people get mad. How dare you tell me what to think? You can't tell me what to believe. I live my own truth. And that's the response that these Pharisees, these scribes, these hypocrites were giving Jesus. They got so mad at the truth, so angry at the truth, they wanted to kill him. And Jesus said in verse 44, you are of your father, the devil. And the, desire, the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. See, just like there's no falseness, no fakeness, no lies in God, there is no truth in the devil. He's nothing but fake. He's nothing but wicked and twisted. And he wants you to believe lies. That's all he can do is feed you lies. That's what he's been doing from the very beginning. That's what he did in the garden was to lie to Adam and Eve about the nature of God. To get you to believe a lie. There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he's a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, Jesus said, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you're not of God. And these are stout words. And like I told you, they got so mad at him. They got so mad about this. They tried in that moment to kill him. Why? Because he spoke the truth. Truth either makes you rejoice or it makes you mad. And you need to pay attention to how you're responding to the truth. And we talked last week and I made reference again to it this morning. But being under construction requires being open to correction being open and ready to make some changes. And when you're confronted with the truth, when you're confronted and the truth comes to you in the, by the way of correcting you, correcting the way you think, correcting what's coming out of your mouth, correcting the way you live, you let the Word of God do that. Be, be very watchful over how you respond to that. Because the only right response to the truth is joy. It's to say, thank you, Lord. I receive that. I receive your word as truth. Because if you get mad and you reject it, you will stay exactly how you are. There will be no change. There will be no transformation. You'll stay in that same shape you are right now. It'd be like this room, just staying like this forever. This room does nobody any good in this condition. But if we'll just stay with the renovation process very soon, it'll be a great service to the people who will come to church here. Well, the same thing's true about you. The same thing's true about me. There are mindsets and thoughts and ways of thinking that as long as we hold on to them, we are of no good to God or anybody else. 
And if you get mad when you hear the truth, no, this is, I, this is how I think. This is the way I've always thought. This is the way I've always lived. How dare you tell me how to live? Listen, you, you better get over that right now. You got to deal with that right now. This, this whole book is about telling you how to live. This whole book is an invasion of your privacy. So deal with it. And when the truth comes to you, rejoice over it. Get excited about it. Even if it starts tearing down walls, even if it starts ripping out old ways of thinking, even if it has to rip out some lies that you believed about God, let the truth go to work. Let the truth go to work. You want intimacy with Him? It requires honesty from you. My pastor said it like this, God will meet you where you are, but not where you pretend to be. There can be no hypocrisy. I don't know. People, that's the big excuse why people don't go to church. Oh, it's just a bunch of hypocrites over there. That's all they are is a bunch of hypocrites. Well, first of all, that's not true. We're not all just a bunch of hypocrites. But let's say we were. Let's say everybody who ever came to church was a hypocrite. That is no excuse for you not having right fellowship and relationship with God. What's going on in somebody else's heart is no excuse for what's going on in yours. It's, it's not being honest with God. Be honest with Him. Hey, if you're a sinner, call it. Say it. God, I sinned. I did it again. He can do more with that than some righteous appearing person who's got the look down real good. God can use somebody who will be honest with Him. Somebody who not just believes in Jesus, but will continue in His Word and let the Word of truth go to work inside them in this renovation process. This is the last scripture I'll give you and we'll be done for this morning. But in, uh, go with me to 3 John. We quote this verse a lot, but I want you to hear it again. In verse 1, the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. He said, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, this is what we talked about. This is where your mind is. It's in your soul. And he's saying, he's writing to this individual and saying, your soul is prospering. Just right here at the beginning of this letter, he says, I pray that you would prosper in every area of your life the exact same way you're prospering in your mind, the same way you are prospering and you are healthy in your soul. Now, if you keep reading, you find out how his soul got into that kind of shape. He said, I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Just as you walk in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Man, there's so much revelation in this. Listen to this. He's saying your soul is in great shape. And I pray that, that what's going on in you begins to overflow and come out of you, that you would prosper in every area of your life the same way you are prospering in your soul. That's being transformed. That's being turned into a new you. That's going through this renovation process, the renovation of the mind, so that you can have life transformation. And that's what he's saying happened in this person he's writing to. He said, I rejoice greatly when brethren came and they testified to me of you. In other words, somebody came and told him he got the truth in him. He heard the truth. He rejoiced when he heard it. He let the truth get in him. He let the truth work in him. He let the truth produce something in him. And John wrote and said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. That's exactly what Jesus said. Continue in my word. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. It's reno day. Or excuse me. It's demo day here at Legacy Church. We're ripping out lies and we're replacing them with the truth. And like I told you, if you can swing a hammer, you can have some fun on demo day. Well, here's your hammer right here. 
if you will just keep hacking away at lies, let the Spirit of God in you help you identify where you've believed a lie. And the Word of God will be like a hammer in your hand that will rip down walls, those things that have existed between you and God and have kept you at, at a distance from Him. The only thing that can be a wall between you and Him is dishonesty, is fakeness. You want intimacy with Him? It requires honesty from you. And the only limit to our closeness with our Father is any fakeness we allow to remain in us. I'm saying today that the truth is in us and we are walking in it. Make the decision this morning that you are unwilling to tell a lie. Because if you'll be unwilling to tell a lie, then you won't be easily fooled and you won't believe a lie. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray over this congregation this morning. All of us who are under construction, Lord, we thank you for the good work you've begun. We call you faithful to finish it, to carry us all the way through this construction process. We thank you, Lord, for the renovation that's taking place right now in our thinking. And we want you to know, Father, we are wide open to you. Actually, just say it out loud right now where you are. Just say, I'm open to you, Lord. I open my heart to you. I open my mind to you. If I've believed a lie, show it to me. If I've believed a lie about you, God, show it to me. And I want to believe the truth. If I've believed a lie about myself, show it to me and replace it with the truth. And now pray this. Say, say the same thing that David said in the Psalms. He said, may the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing to you. I'm going to tell you something, church. When your heart and your mouth get in the same place and there's no distance between them and there's no hypocrisy, there's power. There's so much power in a heart and a mouth in the same place that if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That's how much power there is in this. That's honesty. I believe it in my heart. I say it with my mouth. Well, I believe you've received something good from this today. God is so faithful to us and He's faithful to His Word to watch over it and perform it in your life. Get the truth in you. You can't do that just by listening to a message every Sunday, every couple of Sundays or so. You got to get the truth in you. Continue in the Word. I know many of you, you're believers in Jesus. That's a good thing. But Jesus would say the same thing to you that He said to these people that day. Continue in my word. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Get his words going in your eyes, in your ears, down into your heart. And then let those words come up out of your mouth and rejoice when you see and hear the truth. Rest until you come. Rescue by your
Thank you so much for tuning in to Legacy Television today. Before we leave the broadcast, I want to extend to you an invitation. I want to invite you to join the family. Now, I'm not talking about a church family. I'm talking to you about joining God's family because that's what Christianity is. It's not a religion. It's a father and his family. And today he's inviting you to come home. Many of you watching this, you may be born again, but there may be somebody watching today and you're not born again. Jesus isn't the Lord of your life. Today is the day of your salvation. So just pray this prayer out loud with me. Just say, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe in my heart that Jesus rose from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I'm done being my own God. You be my Lord. I repent of all my sin. Wash me. Make me clean. I am a new creation in you, Lord Jesus. Take my life. Do something with it. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved. Saved from what, you're asking? Saved from hell and eternity. Saved from hell on earth. And now you are a part of God's family. Heaven is your home. And you can have days of heaven right here on this earth. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for praying that prayer with us. If you made Jesus your Lord today, get in touch with us. We want to shout with you. We want to rejoice with you. And we want to say, welcome home. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next time on Legacy TV. Bye-bye.